Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to be working with problems where we approximate the square root of certain numbers. So in this problem, they ask between what two consecutive integers is the following number? Now consecutive integers, what does that mean? Well consecutive means numbers in a row, and integers are positive or negative whole numbers, right, including zero. So some examples of consecutive numbers that are integers would be numbers like 1 and then 2. These two numbers are literally right next to each other, and there are no integers between, right? There are no other whole numbers that are positive or negative between 1 and 2, so they're consecutive. Uh, the number negative 3 and then negative 2 are also consecutive integers. And we can go higher, of course, 19. The next consecutive integer would be 20 and then 21 and so forth. So again, consecutive integers just mean sequences of integers uh, where there are no other integers between them. In other words, they're right next to each other. So the square root of 85 is a number that is irrational. In other words, we cannot represent this number as the ratio of two rational numbers, which is a fancy way of saying we can't write this thing as a fraction. We can only represent it with either a decimal that never ends, never has a repeating pattern, um, or we can tell between what two integers this thing lies. How do we do that? Well, let's say you have, let's just go to another example first. Let's say I have the number, uh, the square root of 9, right? The square root of 9 is 3, okay? But what about the square root of 10? What's that number? What does that equal? Well, whatever it equals, it has to be larger than the square root of 9, right? Now, the square root of 11 also is larger than the square root of 9, but we can't find that. So let's just hop up to the next perfect square. What do I mean? Well, perfect squares are just numbers that we can simply find the square root of easily. They're square numbers. So, for example, the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 9 is 3. Those are both perfect squares, numbers who have integer roots, like 3 and 4. So what does this mean? Well, this tells us that the square root of 10, whatever it is, is less than the square root of 16. So the square root of 10, you could say, is less than the square root of 16, and larger than what? The square root of 9, right? So the square root of 10 is between these two perfect squares. If we simplify the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, we get 3 and 4. So we can finally answer this question by saying the square root of 10 is larger than 3 and less than 4. It's between those two consecutive integers. You might also be asked, um, what is the integer closest to it, the square root you're looking at? In this case, um, the square root of 10 is much closer to the number 3 because the number 10 is very close to the number 9. It's closer to 9 than it is to 16. right? 10 is 6 away from 16, but only 1 away from 1. So it's closer to the square root of 9, which is 3. Here, the square root of 85, how would you go about solving this? What would I, what would I do? Well, I, I might just start using integers and squaring them. So, for example, I might take the number 5 and square it. I know I get 25, a perfect square, but that's way too small. So I might jump up to 7. 7 squared is 49. Still too small, trying to reach 85. Let's try 9 squared. Well, that's 81. So now we know that um, the square root of 81, right, which is a little bit smaller than the square root of 85, uh, is right below the square root of 85 and is 9. So it tells us the square root of 85, we know is very close to the square root of 81. And the square root of 81 is 9, so we know it's above 9. Then we take our next integer, 10, and square it, and we go way above 85 to 100, right? So th that means that the square root of 85 is less than the square root of 100. So what this tells us, finally, is the square root of 85 is larger than the square root of 81, which is 9, and less than the square root of 100, which is 10. And of course, we can find what it's closer to. In this case, the square root of 85 is much closer to the square root of 81. 85 and 81 are only 4 from each other. right? 85 minus 81 is 4. And it's 15 away from 100. So it's much closer to the square root of 81, which is 9, which they might ask. So in question two, we're asked to deal with this expression here, and you might have a, sequences of, a sequence of square roots and numbers, and we can quickly break these down. Here's how we do it. The square root of zero is zero, right? What number times itself is zero? Well, zero. And three 
next to the square root sign like this means 3 times the square root of 0. So this just means 3 times 0. Here, the square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1, right? And we have 5 times the square root of 1, so it's 5 times 1. And we're adding these together, don't forget our addition sign, plus 2 times the square root of 169 is 13. You want to familiarize with the square roots of 13, 14, 15. Uh, the square root of 13 is 169. Uh, excuse me, the square root of 169 is 13. And the square root of 196, if you reverse these two, instead of 1, 6, 9, if we have the square root of 1, 9, 6, we get 14. And this then the square root of 225, we should know that. It should be automatic, is 15. So here, 2 times 13. Right. minus 3 times 15. And now we just use our order of operations to compute what's happening here. 0, 5, 26, 45. And then we just add and subtract. 0 plus 5 plus 26 is 31, minus 45. Remember, if you run into a scenario like this, you can always figure out what 45 minus 31 is, and then reverse your sign. Right. So here, 45 minus 13 is 14. So here this is negative 14, and that would be our answer here. In this problem, we're trying to find out between which two consecutive integers uh, the square root of 7 is, right? A, B, C, D, E, and F represent the points on this line, and we're trying to pick the point that best represents the square root of 7. So here is how you would go about working with this problem if you did not have a calculator. And I, I, I think it's important to, to solve this problem without a calculator. Um, all right, so what do we do? Well, let's just scroll down here for a minute. Let's just move this. Um, the square root of 7, right? What do we do? What do we do? Well, the square root of 7 is a number that's larger than the square root of 4 and less than the square root of 9. So the square root of 7 is larger than 2, the square root of 4 is 2, and less than 3, the square root of 9. 7 is only 2 away from 9, but it's 3 away from 4, so the square root of 7 is closer to the square root of 9. In other words, the square root of 7 is some decimal between 2 and 3, and you know it's closer to 3 than it is to 2. So that means that you know the decimal is between 2 and 3. right? 2, let's say 2.1, 2.2, all these decimals between. Of course, there are many more. Dot, dot, dot. Eventually, we reach 2.5, the halfway point between 2 and 3. Now we know that the square root of 7 is closer to 3, a little bit closer, right? Because 7 is 2 from 9, and it's only one more, 3 from 4. So we know it's going to be larger than 2.5. It's got to be closer to 3. But it's got to be just a little bit larger than 2.5, a little bit larger than the halfway point. So that means that when you're now choosing which decimal to try and use to get the square root of 7, you know it's probably going to be between here and here, 2.6 and 2.7. And if you're not sure, you could start by checking with these numbers to see what they get you and go from there. Here's how you check. You simply do the multiplication. So if you think 2.6 is the best approximation, try that first. And just multiply. 6 times 6 is 36. I carry the 3. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15. Now I'll put a 0 here as a placeholder. 2 times 6 is 12. Right? Carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Add these up. 6, 7, 6. We move our decimal twice because this is really 2 tenths here or hundredths. And we get 6.76. 6. So that tells me that 2.6 squared is 6.76. 6. So we're trying to reach 7. So this is too small. So now we try 2.7. Right? So we know it's between 2.6 and 2.7. Let's try this. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 4 is 18. Placeholder, 2 times 4 is 14. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 9, 12, carry the 1, 6 and 7, get 7.29. So now we know that 2.7 squared is 7.29. Now which one's the better approximation? Is it 2.6 or 2.7? Well now the question is, what's closer to 7? Is 6.76 closer to 7, or is 7.29? Now you might be able to see this in your head, but if not, I would subtract. So um, we can look at the uh, subtraction of 7, the number we're looking at, 7.00 minus 6.76, and then we can look at 7.29 minus 7. 
Notice how I put 7 in different places. I'm setting up my subtraction to always get a positive result. You don't have to do that. You can reverse it and just take the absolute value or the positive result. Uh, but here I set it up to get a positive result. So how do we do the subtraction? I think of 676 to 700, that distance between there, or the distance between $6.76 and 7, which is just 24 cents, right? Um, so it's 0.24. Here it's just 0.29, 29 cents away. So it turns out this is a little bit closer, so 2.6 is the better approximation. It gets you much closer to 7. So out of our choices here, we want to pick the one closest to 2.6 which here's 2.6 and D is a little bit closer than anything else and that's the best approximation. Now even if um, this is a little tricky because C and D are both kind of close to 2.6 but D is a little bit closer so we can pick that one. Alright, only one more problem to go. So just clear this off. Go to the next layer. Alright, between what two fractions is the number below? So the square root of a fraction is nothing to be afraid of. Um, First of all, it looks intimidating, but we can deal with it quite easily. Uh, when we take the square root of any two numbers, a over b, right? one way to deal with this is to take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So for example, if I had the square root of 4 over 9, you could think of that as what number times itself is 4 ninths, or you can think of it as the square root of 4 over the square root of 9, I find this easier because it's like taking the square root of two whole numbers, which I'm more comfortable with. I get two-thirds. So in this problem, we can take the square root of 21 over 144 to see what happens. Now, the square root of 21 is irrational, so we'll leave that alone. The square root of 144 is 12, right? So now we can think about this. Um, the square root of 21, where is that? What does that number represent? Well, it's larger than the square root of 16 and less than the square root of 25. So the square root of 21 is larger than the square root of 16, or 4, right? And it's less than the square root of 25, or less than 5. So it's between 4 and 5. So if I had to write down two fractions that this, this is between, the square root of 21 over 144 is larger than the square root of 21, sorry, the square root of 16 over 12, and it's less than the square root of 25 over 12. So all I just did right there was uh, take all the comparisons here and write them into a fraction here and here, right? The square root of 144 is equal to 12, so um, those 12s just go there. The square root of 21 is larger than the square root of 16 and less than the square root of 25. So that just means, um, because uh, we know these two perfect squares right here. It is larger than 4 over 12, which is 1 third, right? And less than 5 twelfths. So we can write that as our answer for now. And that's the kind of problems you can expect to see.